Generator, generator. Caution, caution. Welcome to the General Purpose Bombs Tutorial. In this lesson, we will cover the deployment of general purpose unguided bombs in several modes offered by the Harrier. For this sortie, you are carrying 14 live Mark 82 bombs. While still on the ground, we will cover the basics of the various delivery modes. Auto, CCIP, DSL, and DIR. We will also be referencing knowledge and skills covered in the stores management and target designation lessons. But first, some theory. Let's talk briefly about altitude or height above target. Having accurate data in this case is crucial for precise weapons delivery. A Harrier can obtain this data from various sensors and systems with different levels of accuracy. For the night attack jet, the following sources are available in order of precedence. The ARBS, radar altimeter, GPS, and barometric altitude. When tracking is achieved, the ARBS will be your primary source, as it is not subject to barometric inconsistencies, nor is it affected by differences in terrain elevation underneath the aircraft and at the target location. Instead, it uses gimbal azimuth and elevation line of sight angles and rates to account for height above target and calculate a precise height above target. In other words, it knows the target elevation and will be able to determine the best attack parameters. If ARBS is not tracking, the mission computer will revert to the radar altimeter or the GPS, depending on which you have chosen when you started the jet. Press the ALT button on your UFC. You can see the bomb option displayed on ODU-1 and GPS option on ODU-3. The former, when colonized, enables the radar altimeter. The latter enables the GPS. Bear in mind that they are mutually exclusive. For now, colonize bomb by pressing ODU button 1. During your attack runs, a HUD legend will indicate the selected altitude source. You can find a full list on your kneeboard. There are five delivery modes available to the pilot. Two computed modes, auto and CCIP, and three backup or non-computed modes, DSL, DIR and DSL-1. Automatic or auto mode provides fully computed automatic release of bombs or flares. It requires the target to be designated by any method described in one of the previous missions in order to provide command steering to an appropriate release point. This functions similarly to the continuously computed release point or CCRP mode in other Western aircraft. The CCIP delivery mode is a computed visual delivery mode with manually initiated weapon release. In the CCIP mode, the ground impact point is continuously computed and displayed as a cross on the HUD. As such, it does not require prior target designation, although it may still benefit from one. The DSL mode provides weapon delivery capability should the mission computer, ADC, INS, HUD, or avionics multiplex data bus fail or any time the pilot feels a manual delivery is necessary. The DSL mode is only selectable on the ASMCI. You need to meet specific predetermined release conditions such as altitude and dive angle. DIR mode provides a backup weapon delivery capability for limited weapon employment. The system reverts to DIR when the SMC fails, resulting in loss of the auto, CCIP, AGM, and DSL modes. Finally, the DSL-1 manual mode provides a backup weapon delivery capability when the SMC and ACP fail, allowing manual fuse arming to be used to arm the weapons. Alright, enough of the theory, let's go get some practice. Take off, climb to 5,000 feet, and fly to waypoint 1. Anchor there, and let me know when you are ready to continue.
Good, let's prepare the jet for attack. First, select the air-to-ground master mode. You will notice the true airspeed is now displayed on the HUD. Next, select the weapons. You can do that using the push buttons on the top row of the MPCD on some of the pages, by entering the stores page and selecting the weapons there, or by using the ACP. Use whichever method you prefer. Now prepare your weapons by setting fusing, quantity, multiple, and interval. For the first run, use the following setup. Set fuse to NTIN, or nose tail instantaneous. Set quantity to 2 as we want to release 2 bombs. Set multiple to 2 as we want to release them from 2 stations. Set interval to 2 as we want them to fall 20 feet apart. Bear in mind that the attack symbology on the HUD will only be available if a weapon is selected and correct fusing is set. Also, unless the master arm switch is on, the delivery mode legend will flash. We will engage several targets using different delivery modes. Normally, you should use a raked range pattern, which you are free to do. However, if you prefer a more direct approach, you can use that too. Okay, for the first pass, we will use the waypoint designation for the attack. Please switch to waypoint 2 and designate it by pressing push button 1. Now turn toward it and when ready, switch your master arm to on. You should see a diamond over the target in a vertical line called the Azima Steering Line, or ASL, going through it. Steer the aircraft so the line crosses directly through the middle of your velocity vector. You should also see the time to go on the right side of your HUD. Whenever the target is outside the HUD field of view or beyond 11 degrees, the ASL and time to go are removed and replaced by a steering arrow pointing toward the designated target. Keep flying level, keep the velocity vector superimposed over the ASL. The weapon release cue will initialize on the ASL 3 degrees above the velocity vector to indicate that a loft delivery is possible. At 3 seconds time to go, the release cue will start moving down the ASL. At that point, you should press and hold the pickle button. Once the cue intercepts the velocity vector, the bombs will drop. It is crucial that you keep the button pressed until all the program ordinance is dropped. You will know that it has happened when the ASL is replaced with a crosshatch symbol. One last thing to remember is that as long as the ARBS is the designation source, the ASL is corrected for wind and also for target's movement, so it should allow you to hit a moving target. Alright, continue towards your first target and drop your ordnance. Bombs away, pull hard across the horizon and check if you hit the target. Switch master arm to off. We will now practice another attack in auto mode, but this time we will use the DMT TV for target designation. You will engage a line of four trucks that are located near waypoint 3. Turn towards waypoint 4 and extend away from the range.
Good. While you are gaining distance, let's set up our bombs for this attack. You will want to drop four bombs, 100 feet apart, in order to maximize the damage done. The trucks are in a column, so set the Q to 4, M to 2, and INT to 10. Select waypoint 3 and designate it. When ready, turn back toward the target. Make any necessary corrections for lineup after rollout as soon as possible. Also, remember that for auto delivery, precise designation is crucial for a successful run. Just as avoiding any angle of bank during release and keeping the azimuth steering line in exactly the middle of the velocity vector. Press the sensor select switch aft twice to enter DMT TV mode. Sweeten the designation and lock the northernmost truck. Maneuver your jet in order to perfectly align yourself for the north to south run. Okay, master arm to on, drop your ordnance when ready, and remember to keep the pickle button pressed for the duration of the release sequence. Very good. Pull hard across the horizon, check the effects of your attack. Switch master arm to off. Alright, now turn toward waypoint 5. We will now cover the CCIP mode. As mentioned before, the CCIP delivery mode is a computed visual delivery mode with manually initiated weapon release. In other words, this is the drop where you point method. It is up to the pilot to place the pipper directly on the target and to press the pickle button at exactly that moment. Do not try to compensate for any perceived system inaccuracies and do your best to keep your wings level. This time you will attack a bunker, dropping two bombs in close proximity to one another. First, prepare for the attack. Set the Q to 2, M to 1, INT to 0, Fuse to NTIN, and Delivery Mode to CCIP.
Now turn back toward the range. Your target is about 75 meters to the north from the red smoke. You should now see a dashed line extending down from the velocity vector. This is called the bomb fall line, or BFL. At its end, there is a cross. In level flight at altitude, this CCIP symbology is likely dashed, which means it is a reflected CCIP symbol and the impact point exists somewhere below the nose of the aircraft, out of view of the HUD. Dropping ordnance with a reflected CCIP cross is not possible. If you press the pickle button with the dash cross, you will designate a position on the ground currently superimposed by the cross and switch the system to auto delivery. For successful CCIP delivery, the target needs to be in the HUD field of view. This is optimized by flying fast and thus increasing the downrange travel of the bomb and positioning the aircraft in a shallow dive toward the target so you can see it in the HUD field of view. Align your jet with the target and keep the wings level. Set the master arm switch to on. Continue toward the target. Once the CCIP cross and bomb fall line become solid, wait for the bunker to be directly beneath it and press the pickle button. Roll out! Roll out! Pull up! Pull up! Pull up! Pull up! Pull up! Pull up! Bombs away! Pull hard across the horizon and turn off your master arm switch. Very good! Fly toward waypoint 6 and climb to 7,000 feet. When you get there, establish an orbit using the AFC and let me know when you're ready to move on to the next mode.
time to talk about the backup delivery modes available in the Harrier. There are three, DSL for depressed sightline, DIR for direct, and DSL-1, which is the same as normal DSL but uses mechanical fusing for the bombs. As the delivery technique is the same for all three, we will cover major differences between the modes before moving to practical part. The DSL mode provides a weapon delivery capability should system failures prevent you from using any other modes. It will become a valid option in case of failure of your mission computer, ADC, INS, HUD, or avionics multiplex data bus. The DSL mode is only selectable on the ACP. Go ahead and select it now. The DIR mode is another backup that will kick in automatically once your SMC fails. It still allows for setting up different delivery profiles using the ASMCI, and it is a good practice to set it up while on the ground. The details on how to do that are listed in the D-board. When everything else fails, there is one last mode for you, called DSL-1. You'll be left with this one if both the SMC and the ASMCI stop working. This mode uses old-school mechanical fusing for the bombs that can be set using the knob in the top right corner of the ASMCI. You cannot control any other settings, and each press of the pickle button will release exactly one bomb. Okay, the last thing we will do today is drop some bombs using the DSL mode. As I have mentioned before, in order to do this properly, you have to use some basic trigonometry coupled with the charts. There are also dozens of different variables that can come into play and require a lot of experience and practice to properly judge. Here, we will stick to the very basics and some simple profiles. First of all, bring up the stores page and set up for the next run as desired. As this part requires a lot of practice, I'd advise that you drop one bomb on each pass. Good, now open up the D-board on the DSL delivery tables. You'll find some samples which you can use to practice. These are far from being exhaustive, but could be a good starting point for you. You can choose whichever profile you prefer, just remember that it is crucial to be within all the listed release parameters in order to hit the target. That means correct dive angle, correct airspeed, release altitude, and sight depression. It is up to the pilot to determine the best initial altitude and results come with practice. A lot of practice. Follow the steps described in the Kneeboard document, keeping the following in mind. The initial altitude and dive angle determines the roll-in distance. In order to be in the correct spot, if possible, make sure to designate the target first and then use the range displayed on the HUD or EHSD. After you roll in, keep the velocity vector 2 to 3 degrees above the target and walk the reticle onto it. Don't put the velocity vector directly on the intended spot, it is that way the reticle will never be able to catch it, unless you want to make a suicide attack. But I'd recommend to choose a much cheaper plane for that. Finally, remember to set the correct depression angle. Do this by entering the stores page and pressing push button 11, or sight. It will show on your ODU and enable data input via the UFC. Choose your first delivery parameters, set up your jet, and practice, practice, practice. While rarely used in combat, DSL mode can be very useful. That's it for this training session. Go and drop the rest of your bombs using the tables from the kneeboard. Have fun!
Pull up, pull up. Pull up, pull up. Pull up, pull up. Pull up, pull up.
If you are wondering how I came up with the DSL delivery tables, I have no idea. It involves some sine and cosine calculations, very complicated, coupled with some chart values that were picked up completely randomly, and then factored through a moon phase chart, a zodiac, and some astrological mumbo jumbo. I, I don't even know. I just mix some numbers together. So if you can't hit the target, don't blame me. You can do your own math. Landing gear, landing gear.